There are several ways of creating smart objects in Photoshop, but it's very important to know what happens if you create them directly in a Photoshop document or if you drag and drop and place a smart object into an already existing document. Not understanding the difference between these two techniques can lead to a lot of headache. So let me explain to you what happens in each technique. So if I want to place an image here, let's say into one of these frames, I can go to File, Browse in Bridge, and then choose an image from here. Let's say I would like to use this image. Now I can use File, Place in Photoshop option, which will automatically create a smart object for me, which is great. I can resize this, I can just hold down shift while I'm dragging uh, one of the corners and then I'm going to place it in here. If I hold down command or control on PC while dragging one of the corner points, I can also distort it to just follow the perspective of the wall. You can also use vanishing point for this, but I don't want to overcomplicate this example. So I'm just going to zoom a bit closer and adjust these corners just a little bit more like that. So now this is in place. And uh, just so we remember, I'm going to rename this layer because this was the one we placed in. So I'm going to call this placed in. Okay, now let's see the other way. And I'm going again back to bridge and opening another image this one in this case and I didn't use the place command I just simply opened it up in Photoshop now I'm going to use the move tool and I start dragging the image hover over the uh, tab of the other document and I let go here over the image so as you can see it placed in a very big image it's much bigger than the original document and this is not a smart object, that's the difference. So it's just a normal layer. Here in the layers panel, you can see when you drag an image or a layer from one document to another, it doesn't create automatically a smart object and also it doesn't resize automatically the uh, layer. So I can manually do this now. I can right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. You can also go to the layer menu and under uh, smart objects, you can find the same command. And I'm going to name this layer manual placement. So it wasn't placed in, I manually placed it in. And then I can use the free transform command. So edit, free transform, I zoom out a bit and I'm holding down Alt and Shift together to resize and uh, resize it to its center point. And then I'm going to make it even smaller. Now I zoom a little bit further back and I'm going to again try to find a good uh, placement for this image inside another frame. So it's already a smart object. That's why I see that big cross over it. So I press enter and now I have two images on the wall. So we have the manual place one and we also have the automatically placed in. Now what if I decide to have these uh, images in black and white. I can of course create a black and white adjustment layer and use it here uh, directly in the actual document or I can also uh, change it inside the source of these smart objects. So let's just try this with the manual placed one. So this one on the left. I'm going to double click on the thumbnail of the smart object which will take me to the embedded smart object source uh, which is by the way is a PSB, a Photoshop big document and the name of the embedded document is always the name uh, whatever was the name before you actually turned the layer into a smart object. So if you remember I first turned into a smart object and then I named it manual placement. So that's my fault, but uh, it's fine the way as it is. What I want to show is that if I go to the adjustments and add any of these adjustment layers, or I can start retouching this image on a separate layer, so I can essentially create a multi-layered uh, document, that won't be a problem at all. So as you can see, I have black and white adjustment layer, and then I go to file, save, I can close this document, and I, if I come back here, I can see the adjusted image inside the frame, which is great because if I want to 
turn that adjustment off, I can just again go inside the smart object, turn it off, save it, and then go back and see it again update. So it's very simple. But what happens if we do the same thing with the automatically placed in smart object? I can double click on that source file. And here we won't see a PSB file format. He here we will see the actual file format, whichever the image was, like it can be a JPEG, PNG. And if it's not a multi-layered file, then you will have issues once you want to add additional layers. So for example, if I add now the same adjustment layer, the black and white, and I want to save this so I can see the uh, changes in my main document, it will ask me to save this into a file, a Photoshop file, which can store several layers. Okay, let's just save that. So I'm going to click on save, then I'm going to close this. And as you can see, it didn't update in my main document because the file that I just saved is not linked to this smart object. So that is the big difference. And that can really give you a headache if you don't know what's happening. So what I recommend to do is in case you know that you want to have several layers inside your smart object, you should do the manual placement, which I did here on this uh, left image. And if you just want to quickly create smart objects without worrying about what's inside them, then you can use the other automatic placing in uh, ver version, which by the way, you can also do by drag and dropping an image. So if I go back to bridge, I can select an image and drag and then holding down command and press tab or alt tab on PC, I can come to Photoshop and then I drop. So I let go. So that's a quick way drag and dropping images in and it also creates a smart object. And by the way, the same thing works from other applications, not just from Bridge. And you can even use the same technique from Illustrator, for example, and drag and drop elements or copy and paste. And then also you will get the smart object uh, option whenever you place in the selected vector artwork or images into Photoshop. And last but not least, there is a preference for the smart objects on the general. So if you go to preferences general, here you can find two options which are important. One of them is the resize image during place. This will automatically resize the image when you use drag and drop or when you use place. Uh, so it won't only create a smart object, but it will also resize it to your canvas size. And then there's the other option, always create smart objects when placing. And this will affect also drag and dropping. So if this is turned on, then whenever you drag and drop or place images into Photoshop documents, it will automatically turn them into smart objects. So if you don't like the way it works, then you can always turn this off. One of the biggest advantages of working with smart objects is that they can maintain the original quality of your layers. So what does that mean? Let me show you a quick example. I'm going to use first of all the crop tool to increase the size of my canvas. And then I'm going to also mask out the white background from this image using the magic wand, select it and then create the mask. And then I'm going to go to invert in the properties panel. Now that I have this ready, I'm going to duplicate this. So I just move this here on the side and using the move tool, I hold down Alt and click and drag to create the duplicate. I'm going to also create an additional layer and fill it in with white, just so we have a backdrop behind these images. And then I'm going to turn one of these into a smart object. So I'm going to use this one here on the top and I right click and choose convert to smart object. Now, just so we know which one I refer to, I'm going to call the one at the bottom as pixel layer. And I'm going to call this one here on the top smart object. Although I can tell that by just looking at it and I can see the thumbnail icon, but uh, just so we can refer to it easier, I, I call them this way. 
Well, what's going to happen now is that I'm going to give you a demonstration of what is actually happening in uh, Photoshop. If I select these two images and resize them together using the free transform tool, make them much smaller, something like that. And then I press enter to accept the transformation. Now I use the free transform tool and I resize them again. You can see the one on the right, which is the smart object, it maintained the original quality, while the one on the left has completely lost the original quality. It's a much worse uh, representation of the original image. Because that version could only use the um, remaining pixels uh, that I had after the transformation. Of course, if I press enter, it will still be a little bit better than this very pixelated image. But you can see it's still much worse than before. Now, if I undo these steps and I go back to the point when I have the smart object on the right and the normal layer on the left, I can show you another interesting fact that even rotating your layers will uh, cause loss in quality. So you don't even have to scale them, even rotating will affect the quality. So if I use the free transform tool on the smart object, first of all, and I rotate it a bit around, then I press enter. Now that I accepted it, let me just rotate it a couple of times. I'm just doing the same thing, pressing enter, command T or control T, and doing transformations, all kinds of rotations. And you won't see any uh, loss in the quality on this image. But if I do the same here with this image, I can start using rotation, accept then free transform again i'm just coming a bit further out rotate accept free transform rotate accept i call this the whirlpool effect because what happens now after we turned it around a couple of times that we will clearly see the loss in quality so this can happen of course rotating images around if you work in photoshop i'm sure you know that whenever you create compositions you will mess around with your layers quite a lot. And it's not that noticeable yet, but it already shows a little bit of issues here around these little details. You can see this one is already different from the original one. You can see some problems already on the image. But if I would continue doing this, and I would do it a couple of more times, let's say another six times i'm just going to rotate it then we will see even more uh, problems on the quality so i can put it on top of the other as well and then you can see now if you look at this and then the other one you can clearly see or notice the difference in the quality so even rotating not only scaling will damage your layer quality if you don't use a smart object. And I would recommend to always use the smart object or create the smart object before you start rotating or resizing your layers. Another great thing about smart objects is that once you create them and use transformation on them, scaling, distortion, rotation, you will be able to see these values even after you accepted the transformation. So if I have a smart object like this image here, if I use the free transform tool again on it, by going to edit, free transform, it will remember the bounding box around it as well. And it will also remember the original size. So here I can see compared to this image's original size, I have these values, so the width is around 13% of the original size. And I can also see the uh, rotation, the angle of the rotation. On top of this, if I would use warp options, so I would use a warp just so you can see what happens. If I warp this edge of the image and I accept these changes, I can again use free transform and select warp, and even the warp option is still available to edit. So it's completely non-destructive in this way. If I have a raster image, so I'm going to turn this one into a raster image, right click and rasterize the layer. In that case, if I use free transform, you can see that the bounding box is already not matching the edges of this image because it's on an angle. 
and the, in a uh, normal layer the free transform always resets so it doesn't remember what was before and you can see that clearly here on the options bar as well the width height and the angle values are all the default values and the same applies to the uh, warp options as well so it will be a destructive way of modifying your layers if you don't use a smart object There's another interesting thing once you start duplicating smart objects in a document. So what happens then? Let me place another image in here. So I'm going to open that image first. I go back to bridge and I double click on this flower. I'm going to use the crop tool and that because I don't need the whole part of the image. And then I'm going to use the move tool and drag and drop it into this document. So once I have it in place, I can mask it and then I can save it as a smart object once I created the mask so I just invert the mask and turn it into a smart object by right click and convert to smart object the reason why I save the mask into the smart object is because in that way even the mask is kept in the original image size so when you resize a mask up and down, in case it's a, a raster or pixel mask, then you will again have the same issue as with images that you lose the quality of the mask. So that's why I keep it also in the smart object. So I'm going to resize this flower and I'm just going to place it close to this image frame or make it look like it's inside this image frame. I can always skew it a bit if I want to just to uh, align it in perspective something like that and now that I have this flower smart object layer I'm going to call it flower I can hold down alt with the move tool and click and drag to create a duplicate now the interesting thing about the duplicate is that automatically is also a smart object so as you can see they are both smart objects and not only they are smart objects but they are also sharing the source so if I change one of the sources uh, from these two it will affect both of the instances so I can double click on one of the thumbnails maybe this one to edit the image and I can go into adjustments and maybe add a hue saturation adjustment layer on this so I'm going to change the color of this flower and then I'm going to go to file and choose save now if I go back to my main document you can see that both of the flowers are updated because the source is shared so that means if I want to I can of course make individual changes like here I can rotate it around and that won't affect the other image because I'm not editing the source I'm editing the instance of the smart object and there is no limitation of how many instances you can have of the same smart object in a Photoshop document so you can imagine that you can very quickly and easily update loads of instances of the same smart object if you use this technique using shared source between the instances of smart objects is great but what if you want to have a separate smart object which are created from the same image so let's say in this case I would like to have this flower but in a different color but I would like to keep them both as smart objects well in that case I'm going to delete this one here at the bottom and when I duplicate the smart object layer instead of just simply holding down alt while I'm dragging it I'm going to right click here in the layers panel and choose new smart object via copy you can also find that under layer smart objects and the new smart object via copy so I'm just going to choose that option and then I can move the other flower here just below it and now if I go into the smart object source and turn off the hue saturation which we created in the previous example I can save these changes and go back to my main document and you can see even though we duplicated the original smart object they are not sharing the same source anymore so they are completely independent from each other this creates a bigger file size but it makes it possible to work with two smart objects created from the original same image 
but still having two separate source files. Replacing the contents of a smart object is very easy. All you need to do is to right click on the smart object and then choose replace contents. Once you do that, you just need to choose a file. I'm just going to choose another image, which is roughly in the same format like this one here. And then I'm going to choose place. So once it's placed in, the only thing I need to do is now to resize it again, because this image was a little bit smaller than the previous one, but even the angle of the smart object was maintained. So it kept the original angle, which I just created. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit here on the top. And then it replaced it with this new image. So that's how simple it is. A new option is to create linked smart objects since the 14.2 update to Photoshop CC. And this feature allows you to have external sources for smart objects. So you don't necessarily have to embed them into a Photoshop document, but you can also link to an external source. So the way it works is that you create a file which I already created here in this case, a Photoshop file with this photo booth. And let's say I'm doing an advert or like a whole uh, advertisement campaign and I have to create a couple of posters with this phone box uh, on the bottom right corner of each of the posters. So I created a quick mock-up and then I can just simply uh, put this document, the whole Photoshop document, into the posters as a smart object, but not an embedded smart object as a linked smart object. So let's see what happens. I'm going to close this here and I'm going to focus on these three documents here. So first of all, I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to the file menu and instead of choosing place embedded, I'm going to choose place linked. So once I have that option, I can select the file which I just created, the Photoshop file, and then I'm going to click on place. So as you can see, I place this document in. And the interesting thing about it is that I have a little chain icon on the thumbnail of this uh, layer. And that means that this is an external uh, source. So this smart object has an external source. So let's say I need my phone box there on the bottom right corner. Now, if I want to do the same thing with the other documents, I can either alt click and drag this smart object from one poster onto the other, and that will keep the smart object as a linked smart object, even in this new document. Or I can also do the same thing and place it in uh, just the way I did it before. Let me just make a little bit more space on this poster and uh, maybe I would have this on the left side. There's a little bit more space here. You can imagine I might add a bit more text here um, saying like you are not in London or something like that could be the advertisement. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what happens once we are going to update this smart object. So again, I just alt click and drag and I'm going to put the uh, form box somewhere on the right side, somewhere here. Okay, so now that we have all uh, three uh, images ready, I can go to the source of this file, update it, and the update will be visible not only in that actual document where I update it, but also in all the other documents. So let's see what happens if I go to file, open recent and I'm going to open the photo booth PSD file. So here maybe I notice some issues with the file like this uh, no smoking sign which doesn't really look good. So I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm just going to quickly make a selection of the area which I want to retouch like this part here and maybe that part at the bottom something like that and then using the clone stamp tool I'm just going to quickly retouch these details so that's one and there's another one at the bottom a bit smaller brush size something like that now if I save these changes so I go to file save 
these changes will automatically update in the other documents because they were currently open. As you can see, they all updated in all other three documents. But what if they are not open? So for example, if I save this one here, I'm going to save it as a uh, poster number one, like that, and I'm going to close it. And then I'm going back to one of these documents and um, go back to the original phone booth as well, which by the way, I can always access by double clicking on the smart objects thumbnail, even though it's a linked smart object, can still open it up and in case I want this to turn into yellow I can go to adjustments choose hue saturation turn on colorize and then I can uh, pump up the saturation and the hue and I turn it into yellow or something like that maybe a little bit more orange like that and then I can always use a selection for this part here on the top to keep this white I'm just going to fill the mask in with black. Uh, just filled it in with black. And then I would be able to do the same for the other details like this pull sign here. I'm going to select it and fill it in also with black in the mask. So now that we have uh, the adjustment, if I save these changes, you can see in the background on these two currently open documents, it will update. But what happened to the other document, which we called poster one, which I have here. Let me just open that one. So poster one, that one didn't update because it wasn't open at the time when I did the changes on the external or linked smart objects source. But here in the layers panel, I can see a little notification that this smart object was uh, changed. So I can always update these changes by right click on it and choose update modified content so once i click on that it will also update and now i have the same uh, version of the phone booth in all three documents so linked smart objects can save you even more time because you can have the same content used in several photoshop documents and be able to update them in one step by just simply uh, working on the external file which you use uh, for the smart object. And of course I don't even have to mention but linking smart objects won't increase the file size of your actual Photoshop document. But you have to make sure that you don't lose the external file because in that case you will have a missing link for the smart object. So if you use InDesign it's almost exactly the same uh, principle. You have to make sure you keep both your document and also the linked smart object files and preferably in one place or one folder. Uh, so you move them together in case you need to move them. There are a couple of things you can do with text layers uh, and still be able to edit them. You can scale them, rotate them and skew them, but you can't distort them. So let me just show you this. I'm going to type in uh, just a letter and I'm going to turn this into black and make it bigger, something like that. So now if I want to put this in a frame here, I will have to uh, add a bit of perspective on it. So if I use the free transform tool and I start rotating this around and press enter, it's still an editable text. So I can go and select it and edit it. If I skew it by holding down command or control on PC, I can still keep it as an editable text. So that's great, but I can't use perspective distortion on it. So let me show you what I mean. Under the edit menu, in transform, the distort and perspective options are grayed out. So I can't access those on editable text. For that, I first have to rasterize this text and only then I will be able to use them. But if I want to keep it as an editable text, I'm going to do the trick and turn it into a smart object. So I just went back to the original version and before I do anything, I turn this into a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. Then I can use the free transform tool. And by the way, I can go and now use distort and perspective from here as well if I want. But I can just hold down command or control on PC and adjust the text to fit into the frame and to follow the edges. So 
that's a quick and easy way to align it to the uh, edges and align it to the perspective of course you can always use the vanishing point filter as well but unfortunately you can't use that on a smart object that's an exception um, non-destructively so I'm just going to set it up like that and what I wanted to show you is that if I want to edit this text of course I can't do it directly here in the main document but I can double click on it and then in the source I can make changes to it so I can change it to R for example save this document and go back and you can see it will update in my main document by the way the same workflow applies to Illustrator files as well so if you drag and drop from Illustrator uh, vector artwork that automatically turns into a smart object but even then you won't be able to use the same two options the distort and perspective uh, transformation first you will have to wrap it up in another smart object and only then you will be able to do the transformations so it's exactly the same as with text if you want to um, be able to distort or use perspective transformation on illustrator artwork then you have to put it into an additional second smart object once you drag it or place it into Photoshop. There is another huge advantage of working with smart object and that is if you use filters on them they turn into a non-destructive smart filter and you can even stack up filters onto the same smart object layer and keep everything editable. So let's see how that works. If I turn this image into a smart object, I can now go into the filter menu and use one of these filters. You can see vanishing point is grayed out and there's a couple of options like lens blur, which is also grayed out. And uh, I think there's, that's all of them. Yeah, you can use all the other filters. So let's just go into the blur gallery and choose um, tilt shift. So I'm going to have a, a tilt shift um, blur on this image. I'm going to focus on the top of the buildings, something like that. So I'm going to keep everything else blurred out, something like that. And I am going to add blur effects like light bokeh and bokeh color as well. I can increase it even more, something like that. And we can increase the blur as well so we can make the the bokeh effect even more uh, strong. I'm going to keep the top of the building in uh, focus, something like that. So as you can see, this would be a very destructive uh, adjustment or effect, but because we are going to add it onto a smart object, it will become a smart filter. So if I click on OK, you can see that this will show up as a smart filter, which I can always turn off and turn back on and if I want to edit the effect itself I can just simply double click on it and then here I can access the options that I use for the filter so if I add another filter let's just see that if I go to filter and choose another filter like oil paint which is another quite uh, strong uh, effect let me just show you the window is here so I'm going to uh, put it in full screen so that's the oil paint I'm going to increase the stylization and reduce the cleanliness increase scale a bit as well something like that and uh, then I'm going to click on OK you can see now this effect is also added and it's as an additional filter and now I can even change the order of these filters and then the blur obviously will blur out the oil paint if it's on top of it or I can again move oil paint on top and then it will be added after I applied the bokeh uh, blur. And for some filters you also have blending options like the oil paint and which you can find here on the right. If I double click on that, that will give me the blending options for the oil paint filter. So here I can change its mode or I can also change its opacity uh, where I can reduce the effect of the oil paint if I want to. And last but not least, it's also good to know that you can use masks for your smart filters. So whenever you add a filter non-destructively 
onto a smart object you can also mask them out so then you can use them only on parts of your document so it's like applying a filter locally wherever you need it so let's see how that works if I turn this first of all into a smart object this image and then I load a selection which I uh, created previously so I have a selection of the parrot then I can go into the filter menu and I can choose one of these effects sharpen smart sharpen so once I have that option I can decide how much the sharpening I want to apply on the image and then once I see before and after and I'm happy with the results I can click on OK and the cool thing about this is that the sharpening is only applied on the area where I want it to in this case that's the parrot and I didn't sharpen the background or the branch so I can see before and after and if I want I can always edit the mask here just below the layer so this is again not a mask which will show and hide the actual layer contents it will show and hide the filter itself the only problem which you might run into is that in case you use several filters on the same smart object they will all share the same smart filter mask so you won't be able to use individual masking for each of your smart filters on a smart object and I probably said the word smart a hundred times in this tutorial but I hope you found it useful and I hope you see the potential in working with smart objects again 101 so thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Touch Plus.